Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. That Toyota is better than the latest Toyotas, and this Toyota is better than any other Toyota. This is the Toyota Crown, the 1996 model, the 10th generation model, and look at it! My goodness, it looks so amazing. What a beauty! In fact, the grill might remind you of the older Land Cruiser. I love it. In fact, even the newer one. <laughs> Okay, hydraulic struts. You know what? It gets the 2JZ. Yes, that's right. The 2JZ engine from the Toyota Supra. I mean, the Toyota Supra also uses the same engine, but it also got a turbo version, which the Crown did not, or maybe it did. I mean, you could obviously do it aftermarket. That's what I meant. Anyways, you can see it says VVTI twin cam, 24 valve, and there you can see. Okay, what a beautiful looking engine. ETCSI. I don't even know what that means. But what a beautiful looking engine and then you've got insulation there and from here it draws in air and then pushes it to cool this engine because it needs to cool it, it offers good performance. Let's just shut this now, it becomes very hard, well that's what she said. It has its own logo which is kind of missing right now, but oh, what a beauty, you know what. When I went to Japan, I sat in this car because still 25-30 year old cabs are the Toyota crowns and they're in such great condition because that is what Toyota is all about. The reliability, they're not even clear lens, forget LEDs here. I think this is for the parking light or maybe this one as well. The indicator though, you can see it on this side, it's on the corner-ish and it's down as well. So I thought the fog light would be there, but no, that's not the case here. Come to the side and you realize this is actually quite a long car. In fact, it was once Toyota's flagship sedan, now it's I think the Avalon and it had another version we'll talk about that when we're driving because there's so many versions of this car there have been 15 generations of the uh, crown i was going to say corona because then they spun it off to the corona as well and then you know they've been made, making a lot of changes to it uh, to this particular model 205 65 15 is the size of the tires this seems like an alloy wheel or oh, i don't know it's a steel wheel or alloy wheel does not really matter what matters is that there's chrome around here as well so that's kind of crazy this lights up as well and this chrome here it's kind of different and weird and they've actually painted the nozzles as well. I think that was not stock or maybe, I don't know. Chrome here on the mirror. You know what? The Japanese love chrome as much as Indians do because chrome door handles, chrome here as well around the window area. And it says Toyota Motors. This antenna actually comes out when you turn on the audio system or something of that sort. What a beautiful design. I'm in total love with this car. I'm not hyping anything. Trust me, it's a beauty, absolute beauty. It is a Royal Saloon, that's why it says Royal Saloon 3.0 Twin Cam 24 Toyota Crown and the Toyota logo there of course. The bumper is obviously metal. That is the exhaust and it's quite a big one and there you can hear the sound, it's moving a bit. Let me show you the underbody of this vehicle. Now there's this chrome line, okay. I remember the STM also had it. STM we don't have it actually, I had an STM wherein I put it around. There was space to do that as well so that nothing gets stuck inside. Let me open the boot, which means that I open the door, there's a button here. This is the button which actually opens the boot of the car. Now, boot space isn't that great here. It's gonna push it up and there you can see the boot. It's not that like huge, but it has got a power tailgate because look at it come down on its, okay, it's shut itself. Showing that power tailgate, I kind of managed to fluff it up. Let's just open the boot again because it gets a full-size spare wheel, of course. And not just that, it gets an alloy, so, uh, we're just going to hopingly keep that up. It says pull right there. I don't know how I'm going to manage this, but I'm going to try. Yeah, just going to open this. I think that mechanism is kind of messed up at the moment. There you can see spare wheel is in a row and power tailgate automatically shuts. I'm just going to give it a nudge and there it is shut as well. The rear seat comfort was amazing, but you can see the crown logo is on the other side. And let's get inside. First and foremost, there's an ashtray here. So there were no door pockets, but there was an ashtray, which meant that people gave preference to smoking and not storage. There's this dummy button right there. I don't know for what, but a lamp here and this good amount of space on offer. In fact, I love the fabrics. It's just super, super comfy. So once you get inside, you realize that you have some storage space here. You have a handle to hold on to here. You have a handle to hold on to here. AC vents are placed here as well. There's a light placement on the top and there are no AC vents anywhere else. So AC vents are just placed here on the top. Kind of weird and there's this very nice handle which goes back very smoothly and slowly as well. Now here you get a lot of buttons. Now this is obviously to control the audio system as well as the air conditioning of the car. And this is for the volume. So that's kind of nice and different as well. I like it. There's a big fat hump in the center. So three people are not going to be very comfortable inside. But you know what? Headrest is adjustable for the side ones. There is no center headrest, but there is one. Doesn't seem adjustable, but there's a center armrest, which by the way has buttons. So you can recline the seat angle and here you get twin cup holders or whatever this holder is, along with some storage and a 12 volt charging socket as well. So that's kind of practical inside this car. 
I love uh, how there's so much headroom on offer, like crazy amount of headroom on offer, even for someone as tall as me who's sitting very upright. Good amount of knee room and leg room. Under thigh support is also quite nice, which is kind of surprising. And you can see the dashboard design, very classy, very sexy, nice use of wood inside. I definitely like it. Seat belts also get the height adjust function. Yeah, can you believe that all these features in 1996? Well, Toyota, you really rock when you made the crown. I don't know what happened later, why you kind of went softish. Now, why am I getting out? Because I'm going to show you how the seat moves. Okay, there you can see when the seat is moving. Oh my God, it is going ahead. It's not just like a recline. It's like moving ahead. That's so nice. Kind of slid ahead, which kind of compromises the legroom, but definitely increases the recline angle for added comfort. Just going to put it back into place, and I hope you guys can see it because I really have to stretch my hand. Thankfully, I have Kanun's hand, so like, kafi lambe ho gaye, mashallah. <laughs> Joke side. Oh my goodness, that's about it. Nothing more to discover. Okay, you can see the parcel shelf. Some stuff is lying there, but there are the speakers of the car. Okay, it does not get soft door close, so don't expect that. But tweeters are placed here. And this is something which you see on all the cars, which tells you that the door is actually open. So let's get inside this beautiful Toyota Crown because it has so many features. That's absolutely crazy. First and foremost, okay, it has got side airbags. It says it right here. And I was getting confused whether it was the Estima which had side airbags. It was actually the Crown. Here you can see there are buttons to adjust the seat, of course. And yeah, it is complete electric adjust powered seat here. Although I really don't understand what is this particular button. What does it do? Okay, maybe it is for the yeah, it is for the lumbar, I believe. You get a proper dead pedal there. Now this is to open the fuel lid. This is to open the hood of the car, and the dead pedal that is the handbrake. To engage it, you pull it backwards. To disengage, you don't know anything to that. I'll show you in a bit. There's some storage space here. These are the controls for the outside rearview mirror adjustment. And if you press a button, what do you do? Nothing happens actually. I thought the this thing will close, but something was written here which is kind of mit out now. So I don't even understand what it says. And they're not really hard plastic. Kind of soft door pockets are actually very small. There is wood placement here and auto one and uh, one up and one down. Oh my God, this is so smooth. I don't even have to pull it. I just like gesture it, and then it kind of closes. Fabric beautifully done, and there's this chrome line here as well. I love this car. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to say that. Look at the dashboard design; it looks so nice. This is very comfortable, and then you can adjust this as well. And there's this push and open, so you can push and then adjust. And yeah, that's kind of something which I need to get used to. Anyway, straight inside, I'll show you some really crazy features. First and foremost, you can see this is like. A huge dashboard has got multiple airbags. This is not auto dimming. There's a light placement on the top, but here you get a mirror along with the light. Same is the case here as well. You obviously get a mirror along with the light. Now you get a handle to hold on to on the left side, but on the right side you actually get a card holder. You actually slot your card here so that the valet can swipe your card. Once you forget that, there is a clock here in the center. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay. Now the most interesting bit is that it says swing. I press this button, swing. What does it exactly do? Notice it. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, guys. Notice it. The AC vents actually swing. That's right. So it has a swing function. Okay, now it's going to turn on. Yeah, now it's swinging. You can see it's moving right and left. What a freaking cool and amazing feature! Have you ever thought of such a feature in any car? The AC vents actually swing so that air is distributed almost everywhere. That's so freaking cool. I think this is to turn it off. Yeah, easy mechanism. And then there's a hazard light button right there. The glove box. Look at it with the smoothness. It opens. Okay. Slowly, 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 so that it doesn't make any sound inside. That is the level of refinement that it offered. Okay, glove box isn't that big, but there's this strap to hold on to things, and this is the trunk opener, which if you've seen my Lexus LS, no, yeah, the ES 300h vlog, you would know that they have this mechanism in case the trunk is not opening, so you can press this button to man, to, like to reset it or something of that sort. So pushing it back into place it takes some effort because it comes down so slowly, it doesn't want to go back with the same speed. And this is an aftermarket unit, so I'm not going to talk about it. it makes no sense. Obviously, you get climate control, air conditioning system, and air purifier is here. Take that, Hyundai Kia. Air purifier, 26 years back, because Toyota obviously made the Corona as well, so they knew they had to have this feature. Jokes aside, really nice switches, very nice to operate. Although the air conditioning is not working at the moment, that's the reason I've turned it on full. But then it's actually like upsetting the balance of the engine because the compressor is going to kick in and draw some power. So I'm just going to shut it at the moment. Meanwhile, this is obviously the gear lever, and it has a power mode, normal ECT. I think ECT could be normie, and there's a power mode as well. Wow! And look at this. Okay, that's so freaking cool. Below the front center armrest, there is some amount of storage as well with a cello tape to maybe 
put it on my mouth so I talk less. And okay, I'm going to operate the handbrake. Check this out. Okay, I put this down all the way. And in order to remove it, what do I do? I pull this and there it comes out. That is how you operate it. And you know, you want to operate the steering wheel adjust very easy. Just do it like this. Okay, this is for pulling it ahead or behind. Okay, now if, I, if you want to take it up, there's this lever which you need to pull. That is for the up. So two separate levers for adjusting the steering wheel. Isn't that kind of weird? Now this is obviously the control for the headlight. Okay, and these are the controls for the wipers. Let's use the wipers right away, which means I have to press it in the center. The spray comes out. Decent amount of spray, but the wipers are kind of noisy. So when you pull the wipers, nothing happens. There's this button you need to press it separately to actually operate the wipers. And you know what? That's kind of it. Let me use the horn. The horn is actually loud. It has this uh, crown logo. This is one of the few Toyota cars which has its own freaking logo. The instrument cluster is nice and wide, but it's an all analog unit. Fuel meter, speedometer, tachometer, and there is a temperature meter. Meanwhile, it tells you exactly which gear you are in. And I think Delta lights are placed everywhere. I can't turn off the car because then it will never turn on. So I'm a little scared about that. So not really hard, a little hard, but not really hard. They have tried to put something soft as well. So that's kind of nice. Now there is a coin holder here that's kind of weird a coin holder and i think this is for i don't even know what this is for maybe the rear sun blind or something of that sort so if you guys know what is this button for do let me know in the comment section below and then this thing open because ashtray was mandatory back in the day there is a cigarette lighter here as well that's about it does this open or something of that sort let me try this yeah there is a cup holder you have to actually press it so while smoking you also drink probably so that is the logic i don't even understand that logic but still i'm just telling you guys anyways let's do one thing let's start driving this amazingly awesomely beastly sedan i just love this toyota car wow i love it wow 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 all right we're all set to go which means getting into drive mode and uh, i don't know why i keep getting into l i'm going to turn off the hazard light i'm not going to accelerate very brutally right now we're just going to take it easy for a moment so first and foremost this car is really very smooth look at the refinement look at the smoothness is unbelievable I, I, I can't believe that this car is actually on that was the level of refinement toyota used to do back in the day of course this engine is a legend we'll come to that in a bit but there's a speed breaker but you can just go through it without any issue whatsoever nothing should touch nothing should touch yeah nothing should touch nothing touch air conditioning is off at the moment there's no traction control which I can see visibly but I don't think it needed traction control either now I was telling you there are two modes so that is actually one mode only so when I press this button yeah that is ECT power are together so that's the power mode and then there's I think regular economy mode and I think I'm driving too slowly so we're going to get into power mode onto the throttle and then response is very nice and smooth but even near the red line there's this unbelievable smoothness from this car so you know what is powering this car? It is the 2JZ. Yes, that's right. The 2JZ. The iconic engine from the Supra MK4. But this is the 2JZ GE, I think. Not the GTE. The Supra had this engine as well as the GTE. The GTE is the twin turbo model, which has twin turbos for more power. This one produces 220 PS of power. Meanwhile, the torque output happens to be to 94 Newton meters. Okay, why is it not shifting down? I need a lower gear. <laughs> there are no paddle shifters. I cannot manual control of uh, the gears, of course, but I can get into two. And when I do that, nothing changes at all it remains the same as such so in this car the engine has not really been tuned for that level of performance as such and uh, obviously because it's a three liter inline six cylinder motor which is relatively big because it also came with a two liter engine which by the way had smaller dimensions it was smaller in terms of weight it was smaller in terms of uh, length as well because then it m met with different car dimensional norms for lesser taxes that's what happens in japan actually anyways so performance is decent this car is about smoothness refinement and that's what it does in acres with the bigger engine obviously it drinks more fuel so it has a 73 liter fuel tank capacity but you should get somewhere between around seven to nine kilometers per liter depending on your driving style the steering is huge well look at that and it has a lot of slack in the center position as such so not really a fun car to drive in spite of this amazing engine the engine is just another level here because it's so smooth and refined you now what is the usp of this engine the usp happens to be the fact that this engine has really strong internals which means that there were twin turbo kits or rather turbo kits which were available later and you could just plonk in that and increase the power as much as you like in this below one okay you could increase as much power you what like whatever you wanted to do, you would could easily do it now the supra mk4's twin turbo engine came into play when nissan actually launched the rb26 dett engine which obviously goes in the nissan skyline the r34 gtr so then toyota felt the heat and they're like okay now we need more power so then they gave this twin turbos and then obviously the rest is history the mk4 became an absolute legend but for me honestly the crown is a legend because first and foremost i've experienced it so many times firstly 
my classmate in school i think between 7 to 9 standard he had the crown and we used to envy him because whenever the car used to come we like oh my god this feature like that feature what's happening unbelievable stuff and then he also had a sonata the jaguar design one sonata but the crown was just another level the level of smoothness we used to go in the car for tuition and i still remember that we never even realized when tuition came and the amazing comfortable chair at tuitions was very uncomfortable after sitting in the crown because the crown is all about comfort this is such a smooth car now the crown is the reason why toyota has sedans because you know what is a small crown in latin well it is of course the corolla yeah that's the word right i'm not kidding what is a little crown in japanese that's camry yeah every sedan version comes from the crown itself that is the level of importance of this car the crown was the the go to Toyota sedan in fact it is the oldest running name plate for Toyota it is i think around 66 years old or something of that sort from 1955 56 is since when this has been on sale so that has been a real long time red line comes in around 5 and 1/2 thousand rpm it just shifts so this torque converter gearbox is kind of on the lazier side but as soon as you let go of the throttle it automatically drops revs we're going to get into l mode and see what is different yeah a little bit more aggressive but it's not a fast driving engine are we going to take a left this left yeah sure. All right so here we go around the corner there is obviously a lot of body roll but more than the body roll i mean handling is not that great because there's this softness to the suspension which really lends it a fantastic ride quality the horn the horn is actually decent which is going to come to a halt so that i can check the brakes brakes are actually nice very smooth everything is about smoothness here left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator we get into drive mode or we just launch in l revving the motor and off we go Uh, no wheel spin at all the low end is actually very weak here it just doesn't respond and then in the mid range now it immediately pulls so the mid range is the sweetest spot and the top end is also kind of lacking and there's a big speed breaker but brakes are really very nice so it stops dead in its track onto the throttle now for a 2JZ motor i would expect a lot more performance actually so they also had a crown majesta which kind of became the top spec variant and then toyota made a lot of changes you know this is the 10 generation model this was the first model which actually came with a unibody a monocoque platform because uh, for the first 9 generations it was a body on frame and there have been 15 generations of this car and then they kind of killed it with the latest models because the latest models kind of lack the crownness to it they kind of very bland the ones i saw in japan so that's a little bit oh my god there it comes into play absolutely crazy it's so refined even the sound it makes is so freaking smooth and around the corner i don't know why it just doesn't respond in the lower end of the rev range but when it does trust me it pulls so freaking nicely as well 0 to 100 km per hour should be dispatched in around 12 seconds top speed should be well toyota is very optimistic it has a speedometer which reaches 240 km per hour which we will reach in my dreams of course so we're going to stop here and we're going to try and launch it once again left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator doesn't really rev revs drop very fast and oh my god i think it's going into limp mode it's saying ecty power but it's not okay now it's alive and off we go Yeah, for a 2JZ motor, I honestly expected a lot more performance. Maybe something is wrong here because it's not pulling the way it should. Come on, you have to keep the Supra MK4's name high on top, and that's something which the car is not doing at the moment. So yeah, I, I think uh, maybe it's kind of choking in terms of airflow, something of that sort. So that's the reason why it's not like pulling as strongly as I would expect. And there we are in limp mode, so it's kind of sleeping at the moment. Is is it dead or something? Oh, uh, L mode onto the throttle. Come on, respond. And I think. you have broken your own car do what do you keep doing how do you do this and it's alive again because it saw the etios and it's like oh my god that also has a toyota badge no i can't do this if that one is running this one has to definitely run because that's not a toyota really this is what a toyota is and there off we go i did not dramatize this i did not tell that cap to come i didn't do any of that so trust me on this uh, i think there's some issue in the car but still what a lovely car i absolutely love the tech the smoothness the refinement the comfort and everything in this vehicle and of course that 2jz motor my goodness when you tune it you would see a sedan which would compete with the bmw m5 kind of in my dreams though but from the same year probably yes so guys this is my vlog of the toyota crown and no amount of me talking is enough to justify what an amazing sedan this is this is the japanese sedan which rewrites everything in the history books in fact if you go to japan right now you can get a ride in this because all the cabs are the crowns and you know what they are so old yet feel so fresh and nice and on that bombshell is time to end thank you so much for watching oh we are in limbo again you know why because there's a vw and obviously seeing a vw this car says that oh i should copy you and not be reliable and shut itself i think uh, this is having this uh, 
you know crawl mode or something of that sort or it has a dash technologies automatically you know reducing the speed when it senses a cow or something of that sort you have to go right you have to go left let me know i'm just going to open the window because it's so freaking hot ah uh, ah uh, I realize when you go full throttle, it's like नहीं मुझसे नहीं हो पाएगा. But when you go half throttle and all, it's kind of moving as well. This left. This left. Yeah. All right, and here we go with some josh, but no, doesn't make sense. Well, Toyota did it before Maruti did it. Steering does not center only. Yeah, the steering will not center. It will just point to one direction. I want to park here. Okay, automatically it will keep going inside and inside. Well, that's the reason Toyota and Suzuki have kind of married together. So this is the Toyota, and that's her girlfriend, his girlfriend rather, the Suzuki.